everybody, welcome back to Carson's IH Garage. Today we're going to be installing a disc brake kit. I got this disc brake kit uh, from DNC Extreme in Colorado. And um, I got it because it was the cheapest one and it was the simplest to install. So today I'm going to show you how to install the bracket, how to grind down your knuckles so the caliper can clear, install your disc, install your hubs, and everything like that. Now, for today's purposes, just to show you how the hub would install like that, those are the wrong hubs. That's a disc, um, sorry, that's a drum brake hub. That drum brake hub usually wouldn't belong on a rotor like that because you see it's got this gap here which doesn't sit flat on the rotor, therefore the rotor has a kind of, not warp, but like a, has a wobble to it. So I'm going to show you how to, um, you know, install that how you would as if it was the right hub. My new hubs are on the way. I didn't get them in time and I want to get this video out to you guys. So beyond that, I'm going to show you how to install your brake hose there and then I'm going to show you how to plumb your master cylinder here and then I will show you how to properly bleed your brakes and then hopefully those birds will shut up in the background while we're working. So uh, hope you guys will enjoy the video. Let's get to it. Okay, so I know I kind of sped through that, uh, the tear down there, but I just wanted to, like, just get to installing those disc brakes, because, I mean, I've had a video before, you can go check that one out, how to service your front locking hubs, where I took all that stuff apart, and, uh, and so if you want to know how it works, and, and how to really service it and take it apart, go right ahead, oh, look, little worm. Yeah, you could stay. Um, <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up this surface here, just wipe it down, um, and then I'll get my adapter plate for the caliper, and we'll bolt that up. And uh, we'll either have to use the uh, the old bolts like I had to do for the other side, or we could use the, uh, the new ones. So I'll have to see. I'll let you know. Okay, so there you go. I was able to use the uh, new bolt supplied with the kit. And uh, I bolted it up, and you want this one I found like flat, like on top here. So that that goes pretty flat, and then this is kind of I don't know what we call it, three, three o'clock position, we'll call it. Um, so yeah, not real hard to do. Um, make sure you clean out your threads. I just sprayed my like brake cleaner and just ran the little rag in there, and I was able to get them cleaned out, and then I was able to bolt it up because I noticed the bolts, um, the threads in there aren't very deep, very kind of, kind of shallow, not very deep cut threads, so they might strip out easy. It's just a word of, of warning there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's a, it's a pretty easy install, and that's, um, I mean, to bolt on a bracket, literally the hardest part is having to grind a little piece for the caliper, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, so now you're gonna wanna do is you wanna grab your caliper, pull the pads out of it, and pull the dowels, um, out of it and I'll show you kind of how that goes together and what you have to do here in order to get that end of the caliper to clear going this way. Okay so the idea for grinding with clearance is you have your caliper and there are these little bushings on the back and those slide inside the caliper housing here. Now you have these bolts which it doesn't stop there because obviously it's the same size so it could just go completely off but there's also a point where your pad here contacts the rotor once it's installed so it can only go back so far but as your brakes wear down obviously when they get closer to your backing plate here that caliper needs to slide to take up that extra slack so that'll get closer but that'll always like stay faced front on the rotor and your back piston here will make up for that extra clearance in your brake pressure. Like, so it'll hold more fluid behind that piston. So it'll take up that clearance. And then once you press down on your brakes, you'll get, still get that same braking pressure. That's why people say disc brakes are so much easier and they're so much better just because they don't require adjustment with a whole screw like drum brakes do. So if you watch my video, uh, 
on doing the rear axle shafts in here. You remember me adjusting these brakes out, even in the, uh, might have been the hub video too, where, you know, you have to adjust this and you have to test the drag on the drum. You don't have to do any of that here. You just put in your pads and go. So, it's, it's pretty easy and, it, and they provide a lot more stopping power because you think about it, instead of a surface like this trying to push out, you're just clamping down on a disc. And so you get a much better braking. So your idea here is that you're gonna go and you're gonna find the point back here where it hits. So I could see there, there it hits. So I'm gonna show you on the other one because I already did this side. That I didn't have to grind too, too much. Like I'm not compromising the integrity, but you can see what I'm saying here. So if I push this, up against it like that that's tight I don't know how well you could see it but I do have a gap down there because you could see light behind it so that's a good enough gap and even with with my brakes wearing down I could take this out this uh, this pad out and push it and I get probably about that much of a distance away from the edge of here to the rotor before I make contact over there and of course, I'll never wear the brakes down to the backing plate. So that's just a basic rule of thumb. And yeah, when it comes to, to having to cut this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut mine down. I'm gonna show you when it, what it looks like when I'm done with it you know, from a better view. So there's generally about how much you have to grind. You see, I nicked this a little bit, but I got a nice clean cut here. It almost looks factory once you just throw a little paint over it which is what I'm gonna do now to protect it from rusting. Uh, I checked it with the caliper already and I was able to slide it and I got this to kind of match up with this edge here. Like, you know, looking looking down, you can see that they lined up, which is more than you need because this comes about, this is about level with the edge of the rotor. And so it's not gonna go past anywhere. And at that point, you're gonna be grinding on the backing plate when you're going to stop and by then you're just supposed to change your brakes like just get new rotors rotors are 25 dollars. pads are probably like 20 25 get them from napa i don't even know they have good stuff so it looks pretty good um kind of i'm pretty happy with that i've seen some pretty janky uh some pretty janky grinds uh done on on other pictures and uh forums i've seen of people doing the swap so that's literally the hardest part like if you can manage this or have a friend do it you're gonna be able to do this in your driveway. Like, it's so easy. So, um, I'm gonna go paint over that, and then I'm gonna show you how to install the, the hub uh, and knock out those studs and, and put in the, um, the other ones. Um, with this hub, if you see on the back of it here, it's got this, like between this surface uh, where the lugs mount from the back, and um, this, the back of the hub here, you see there's kind of that sloped transition. That's not what you want. You want more of a, of a turned step of a transition, similar to what's like on the end of the hub here. So that's what it should look like down there in order for your rotor to slide over and sit flat against the back of that hub. So I'm gonna knock those studs out, but I'm only gonna put in like a few of them like I did on the other side here. And you'll see, again, the gap here and you can see the stud coming through and you can also see uh, on the pad there and you hear it too that just sounds that the rotor is you know wobbling a bit again because it's not sitting flat on the back of that hub and the hub is what keeps it sitting straight as you go down the go down the road similar to how your drum brakes would work like if that hub was cocked in any way, your wheel's gonna wobble. Similar with like a bad wheel bearing. So that's what keeps it straight. So enough about that. I'm just gonna take these studs. I don't need these studs anymore. I'm just gonna knock them out with a hammer. Just a couple hits and you're good. And then I'm uh, just gonna grab three, you know, two and then one there. Put the lay it over top of the rotor and you bolt those down. We could slip it over, put the pads in the caliper, make sure everything still clears like we want to. And then we'll go ahead and swap out that brake hose, plumb it all up, and then I'll show you how to bleed your brakes. Here, and I got my hub, mind you, it's still the wrong one. And uh, what I'm gonna do 
Let me see if I can do this one hand while holding the camera. So, um, I'm gonna wanna. Nope, no chance. Okay. Oh, actually, hold on. So, what you wanna do is you wanna line up your holes. You wanna take your extended stud, which is included with the kit. You can see that it's got this extra length between the little end here and your splines. And that's gonna allow it to pass through the rotor just enough to engage the splines on your hub. And so what you could do now is you could take your hammer and you can just kinda give those a little tap in place and then grab one of your lug nuts and thread it on the back. Let's see, it's still moving a little there. So I'm gonna go tap these through and then we'll move on to installing it and checking and make sure we still have our clearance here um, to our caliper and then we'll move on to bleeding and the brake hose. So now we'll move on to taking off the master cylinder. So what most people don't know is um, like there's generally three or four different types of uh, master cylinders. You have a single pot, you have a dual reservoir which is what we'll be installing where half of it is dedicated to the drum brakes that will remain on the rear and the other half is going to power the disc brakes we just put on. And then there's a drum drum master cylinder which has two equally sized reservoirs uh, for drums and then a similar one to a disc disc master cylinder which powers discs if you had four wheels all around. So um, what we're going to have to do here is I'll uh, pop off this line, drain the fluid out of it. Uh, I'm just going to get a, have a little water bottle with a cap on it. Just going to grab that, let it drain out, uh, check on the level here. Then once it's mostly drained, we'll pop off this line. Um, and uh, we'll start mounting the new one. And then once our new proportioning valve is in, which is this piece down here, because you have to get one also for, um, for your new uh, disc brakes up front. That's coming from Jegs and it's still on its way, so it might be a little while um, until we see it. But all you have to do is take this off, drain it, or drain it here, but I don't want to touch that because I don't want to break it. Uh, and then you should be set to, to pull the master off and then install your new one. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. You know, things have really gotten a lot easier for me, you know, fitting in here, mainly because uh, I don't have an engine. That right there, that's the transmission. More on that later. Video coming soon. So now I'm going to take your 9 16 and pop these loose. took forever. The DMV line has me beat as far as efficiency, but uh, it's out. There you go. Not as dirty as I thought it would be after running it. I did bleed them pretty dry. Um, you know, pretty dry and clean when I first did the brakes, but there's some nice scum in there but this master does work good and it holds pressure really nice for how grody it looks so if you really want this for your nut and bolt oem restoration i'll make you a heck of a deal including this line too i bent i bent this by hand and it looks factory I'm quite proud of myself for that actually i actually might use it again for uh for the new master cylinder we'll have to see you know i lied about it being easy to you know, have your engine out and work on your thing. It's equally as hard. Okay, so slight uh, thing here. I, I know I read this on the website where I bought this from. Uh, you just gotta pound a little clearance into the fender there. So I'm just gonna try and be as neat as possible. I don't, let's see, I was gonna take a punch, like a squared punch, uh, as like a chisel, and just see if, I'll mark that. Um, just by giving it a little scrape here. And I'll see if we can't, uh, yeah, right there. Just give it a little tap with the hammer, everything like that. So give me a moment and I will have that clearance. Lying if I told you that didn't take long, cause well, I'd be lying. <laughs> um, so now that it's all in, it's all bolted in, I didn't bother running any washers, um, cause I think it just looks cleaner without it. Uh, and while I was standing around, you know, working, proportioning valve showed up. 
so it's a little too dark tonight uh, to get this going. Tomorrow we'll get this mounted, probably somewhere. <laughs> And then the way this works is you have your port going in on the top and you have your port going out for the back. So this is for your fronts, these two there. So I'll have to, I don't want to mount this too far away because my top existing brake line here, I'd like to ideally bend that over, which I probably can if I started the arc like up here, and made a drop down to here. And if you're wondering this little plastic piece on top, that's for a brake light switch. Um, so when it senses pressure, it'll turn on your brakes, but I already have one when you just push down on the pedal ever so slightly. So that's that. So uh, I'll get this mounted in the morning and we'll keep moving from there. So really all you have to do here, uh, as far as installing your brake line, it's a banjo bolt style. So you just have to put a crush washer on the other side of the thing, bolt it down and there's kind of a slot here where that would sit. And so that gives you a pretty good angle there. And then uh, there's a little boot right there you could slide. Uh, in case your hose might contact something while you turn, so you could always check that. Move it accordingly, it'll stay at its place. Maybe you gotta add a zip tie or something. But that's basically it. And then as far as bleeding, you always wanna start at the point furthest away from the master cylinder. So start at your uh, wheel over there, then move to this one, and then the passenger one, and then finally end with this one. And because my master cylinder is right up here, um, it'll work out the air bubble. <laughs> 